Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the fourth out of four quarterfinal games here at the OCAA Basketball Championship here at the Athletics and Fitness Complex at Lambton College. Alongside Hollywood, Matt Rose, I am Tony Frangus, and we are excited to bring you a highly anticipated tilt, our main event. It is the host, Lambton Lions, who come into this one with the longest active winning streak in all of the OCAA, seven consecutive games, taking on the beast from the east, Matt Rose. It is the George Brown Huskies, keys to the game here, Matt. Let's get right into it. Lampton, they can beat anybody. You know, they're on home court. Haven't had any trouble in recent memory. Seven consecutive wins, but the George Brown Huskies maybe with the psychological advantage here. Yeah, the, the Huskies, as you said, Tony, the beast from the East, number one ranked team in all of Ontario and number nine in Canada. So we'll look to see what the Lions are able to do here. The Lions are uh, a very athletic team. They look to get out on the run. Uh, Jason Watts, uh, uh, Ontario second team all-star. Uh, second in uh, the OCAA in three-point percentage and his ability to knock down shots, spread the floor, also be active defensively and, and get a hand up and, and uh, really affect some shots will, will be the uh, uh, opportunity for the Lions to uh, hopefully play our first upset here uh, this weekend. As we mentioned, uh, this is the fourth of four quarterfinal games here today. A little bit earlier this afternoon, the day started with the Humber Hawks, a convincing win over the Georgian Grizzlies, 88-60. to Another lopsided win followed that. The Seneca Sting uh, dispatching the St. Clair Saints with very little difficulty. And Matt Rose, you just finished the broadcast there. I hope you have another one in you. The Redeemer Royals <laughs> uh, take it on the Sheridan Bruins. And the nine-point deficit that uh, the Bruins faced yes. at the end there doesn't really tell the tale. This one really did come down to the wire. Yeah, that, that score wasn't indicative of how that game went. Sheridan was in that game right till the end. And, and quite frankly, uh, to draw it back to nine, I believe it was it was extended out to, to 14 or so with uh, two minutes left. And and uh, even then, they that team never gave up. Uh, as I said in the broadcast there, uh, the, uh, the dynamic duo on the backcourt for the Sheridan Bruins that has been there for the last uh, five years, Nick Campbell and... and Jamal Edwards, unfortunately, both fell out of the game in the last couple minutes. And, uh, you know, the, the uh, OCAA uh, is, a, is in better shape, and, and collegiate basketball in Canada is, uh, you know, after they, uh, they arrived on the scene here, and, and they leave it in good hands. So uh, speaking of that, in, in terms of good hands and, and rookies, uh, the Lambton College uh, able to get a little bit more hardware last night as uh, rookie Cam David made his first uh, all-rookie team here, and, and Cam's really made a difference. He's a player out of uh, Brampton, Ontario, uh, originally David Suzuki High School, and transferred into Father Carr, uh, or far, sorry, Father Henry Carr Prep in Etobicoke, where he played his final high school basketball season, and now is seamlessly transitioned into college basketball here in the OCAA. About 90 seconds before we get to the pregame festivities here. Uh, players to watch on each side there, Matt Rose. Let's start with the host team, Lampton Lions. I think it goes without saying the veteran Jason Watts. Yes, sir. Probably playing with his heart on his sleeve as every game through this tournament could be the last one of his OCAA career. Yes, and, and he's a storied player here at Lampton. Unfortunately, uh, as a, a third-year transfer in from uh, St. Clair County Community College across the river, uh, one, unable to get to the 1,000-point mark here at Lampton, uh, but definitely the X factor for the Lions when he's on his game. They are a tough team to beat. On the other side for the Georgian Huskies, Kingsley De Silva, uh, their leader in points per game, 14.9. However, this team top to bottom, five players in double figures, something you don't see too often at this level. And a lot of them getting handed some hardware last night as well. Like we mentioned, first team All-Star honors for Mr. De Silva. Hani Ahmed as well getting second team All-Star honors and one to look for, Matt. Chris Fields, Defensive yes. Player of the Year, more than three steals per game, and that yep. is one dangerous foe to have on the court. Yeah, first in the OCAA, Tony, in steals per game, and guess who was second not too far behind? His backcourt mate, Hani Ahmed. So this is a team that's really going to get after you in the backcourt. Stand by now, and uh, public address announcer Dave Walls will bring us our national anthem.
Well, I just Matt, I hope you are ready for the loudest game you have ever called. I got a feeling that's what we're in store for here, a capacity crowd standing room only here at the Athletics and Fitness Complex at Lampton College. Tony Frangus, I am very, very excited for this ball game. Perhaps the biggest game in Lampton College Lions basketball history as they have the opportunity for the first time in this college's existence to host an OCAA championship game. And we are officially underway here at the Lions Den at Lambton College. Cam David handing it off to Tyrell Miller. He'll go off the glass and in, and we are underway here. And joining me up in the broadcast booth, all of a sudden, Raptors analyst Leo Rodens. <laughs> An honor and a pleasure, sir, to have you up in the broadcast booth. Thank you for coming. Pleasure's all mine. Great to be here. I know you had an opportunity to check out the earlier game there a little bit. Redeemer and Sheridan, you kind of got an action-packed second half in. Maybe I'll defer to you to your thoughts on, on a situation like that. Well, I tell you what, I thought Redeemer did a great job of really controlling the game, using their maturity and they are more of a fundamentally sound game, and their size was a positive factor. So they're going to be a team, I think, uh, going to push everybody here. As we get into tonight's matchup here, you have the host, the Lambton Lions. You have the number one team in the province in the George Brown Huskies. Who in this situation really has the psychological advantage, do you think? Well, I, I think that you have to say with this crowd in this environment, you know, I think Lambton College is a great opportunity for them to really make a statement here. You know, I, I talked to some of the guys before the game. I think they're really confident. I think they feel that this is a game they can win despite what George Brown and the credentials they come in here with. You had an opportunity, like you mentioned, to chat with the Lambton Lions team a little bit before this evening's game. Uh, what is it that that you say to the guys going into a situation like this? You know what? Have fun, number one. you got to enjoy it. you got to get out here and play. These are great opportunities you're going to remember the rest of your life. But it's, I had a coach once tell me, if you, if you, nobody, you can play against a team maybe bigger, better, faster, but nobody can outsmart you and outwork you. So if you leave it all on the floor, you're going to be successful more than you're not. And that's what you want to do out here. You want to have a great time, outwork, out hustle, outplay on every possession, and you'll get a W. I'd be remiss, of course, if we didn't uh, acknowledge what's going on in the world of the Toronto Raptors. You know, they continue to impress in the Eastern Conference. But uh, to me, uh, Leo, and I'll defer to you on your thoughts on this, the big team getting in the way of maybe a finals repeat for the Toronto Raptors, the Milwaukee Bucks, you know, still in single-digit losses as we head into the second week of March here. What does it take for a team like the Toronto Raptors to beat the Bucks in a best of seven? Be healthy. That's it. Be healthy. I really believe the Toronto Raptors. I'm not worried about where they're going to finish first, second, third. I don't care. I think if this team gets to the finish line healthy, they believe they can beat anybody, and they're not worried about home court or winning on the road because they've done that. They've accomplished that. So I think the only factor in, in terms of playing Milwaukee or Miami or Philadelphia, whoever they play, is get to the playoffs healthy with a full roster. And we, I know you get asked this all the time whenever we talk about the game of basketball in Canada and how it's evolving. And I know in your playing days it might have been unfathomable for a Canadian to go first overall in the NBA draft. And all of a sudden, you know, we've seen it twice in the last few years or so. Um, what is actually going on Canada-wide that has led to all of a sudden the cultivation of this level of talent? Well, you think about it, the NBA number one, you know, coming to the Toronto in 1995, the NBA has really spurred a tremendous growth in Canada. Now with a championship, we're going to go next level. We're not going to see it for a little while, but trust me, it's happening. The movement is there, and the growth of the game is exceptional, the amount of participation in the game, and you're seeing it at this level, OCAA, U Sports. You keep looking at all the different levels of the game in this country, it's getting bigger and better. Yeah, the best are going to go south. But what stays here is getting better, and that's what's going to make the game continue to grow. So it's phenomenal. Leo, um, honestly, it's been an honor and a pleasure. I know you got a long road trip ahead of you this evening still, so it's been uh, well, hey, thanks for a heck sharing of a day and, for you uh, already. So enjoy the call and uh, have some fun. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you so much All for right. this, Leo. Raptors analyst Leo Routens joining us up at the broadcast booth here in this quarterfinal matchup of the OCAA Basketball Championships here. The Lambton Lions currently lead the George Brown Huskies by a score of 8-2. to two. As Matt Rose gets back well, onto the microphone. Big shoes to fill here. I mean, I'm, I'm no, uh, no Jack Armstrong, but hopefully I can, uh, I can keep up uh, with you here on the broadcast and 
We'll, uh, we'll see. Okay, we need your most emphatic hello and your most emphatic buckets, and we'll, we'll work on your Jack Armstrong impression as okay. the night goes on. Yes, exactly. The game is young. Exactly. Yeah, Leo Routon's fantastic uh, uh, guest here to have uh, for the Lions. I mean, uh, for him to take the time out of his schedule to come down here and, and really, um, you know, assist us with uh, the uh, ceremonies here, fantastic. Uh, it really speaks to the character of, uh, of a guy like Leo. Just loves talking basketball, too, and that's that's what I love about Leo. Is that you can ask him just about anything you want as Darius Canty puts a little too much off the glass here, and back come the George Brown Huskies. Drive in there. Watch him collect Watts. the boards. Gets it, and here comes Tyrell Miller to DeAndre Reed. Reed splits the defenders. He'll finger roll. No good. There's Darius Canty with the O board, though. Put back. Won't fall for him. Tyrell Miller gets the loose ball. Jason Watts. From long range, no good, and it is pulled down by Nassim Barry, and back come the Huskies. A little slower in transition this time, trying to slow down the pace of play. That that really moves to their style of offense. They're, they're a very efficient team. Uh, third in the OCAA in points per game, and, and first in uh, field goal percentage, hitting nearly 50%, 48 and a half, uh, of, their, uh, of their field goal opportunities. And DeAndre Reed goes baseline up and under. Jason Watts can't finish the pushback. And here come the Huskies once again. And firing from long range is number two, Robert Ocampo. No good. Jason Watts gets a handle on it. And here we go again. And boy, is Watts putting his stamp on this game early. I mean, a couple big shots and, uh, you know, a few big rebounds as well. Uh, you know, the fifth-year seniors come to play. Cam David, the rookie. Oh. Mishandled, and back come the Huskies. Oh, and, and a, a beautiful block, block there, and the missed put back by De Silva. The Lions will look to capitalize here. Tyrell Miller feeds DeAndre Reed in the paint off the glass for two. Great cut there by DeAndre Reed, and, and a, a beautiful find by the first year guard, Tyrell Miller. Hani Ahmed with the handoff to De Silva, back now in the hands of Tabiri. Tabiri from long range, no good. There's Cam David getting the loose ball. And here's the assist, man. DeAndre Reed can't finish. And he's gonna set up at the line for a pair. Yeah, DeAndre, uh, a Scarborough, Ontario native, uh, Central Toronto, or sorry, uh, Central Tech, uh, out of Toronto, uh, high school where DeAndre Reed played his uh, his post, or sorry, his secondary school basketball and really made his presence felt early in the Lions, uh, early in his career with the Lions last year as a first year player, a tenacious rebounder, Tony. DeAndre Reed, 10 points per game to go along with seven boards and he'll get you about a steal and a half every night as well as he hits his first free throw. Yeah, Reed, a 64% shooter from the line. And he handles the pressure just fine. 22 goes two for two. And the Lions now have an eight-point lead. Yeah, Tony, that's another aspect to this game that these players really haven't felt before. Uh, you know, home games here in the OCAA don't usually consist of a couple thousand people. As Watts picks off the pass, Cam David has it now in transition. Got an arm up. No call. Journey Joseph saves it. Keeps it in bounds, and there's DeAndre Reed off the glass. Just a little too much off it. Here come the Huskies again. That's number five, Hadi Ahmed, bringing it to half court. Ahmed in the corner to number 12, Nassim Barry hits it from long range. Boy, and that's a shot for a big man like that to be able to make that kind of shot. I mean, that's one that can really stretch the defense. Chris Fields there picking off the pass, couldn't maintain the handle on it, goes out of bounds and back in the hands of the Lions, and that might have been a little bit of a wake-up call to keep their head up on those simple inbound passes. Yeah, this and is a full-court man-to-man that George Brown deploys, but here's the, uh, here's the negative to that is open opportunities as long as you beat your man in the front court. Trying to go up and under is number 11, Christian Tabiri. No good, oh Jerry Joseph trapped at the baseline. It will remain Lions ball. That is a lot of contact there. That journey, Joseph, a lot of hands in there, reaching over hands. I don't know. Oh, and long a it went past to DeAndre Reed, two-handed slam. What do we got here? Is that an and one call? 
Well, he's setting up at the free throw there line. We go. And it certainly looks like that's where it's going. And a little bit of deliberation between the officials and Chris Fields there. I think Fields looking for an explanation. Definitely, and it, it appeared that uh, head coach there, Jason Dawkins, in his first year with the George Brown Huskies was a little bit upset for uh, or uh, with Buck Reed perhaps hanging a little bit on the rim after that dunk. As Reed can't complete the three-point play, and it'll go back the other way. Matt, you uh, being a referee yourself, uh, you'll see this situation a lot of the time. You make a call, and perhaps the players will contest it. In your history of officiating, be it watching it or conducting the game as an official yourself, yes, has that ever resulted in a call being turned <laughs> around? I, I do not believe in my short history uh, as an official um, and as a fan of basketball, which is, which is a long history I've ever seen a call change. Outlet pass to Journey Joseph. He can't finish, and here come the Huskies. Drive baseline here. Kick up top. That's Barry again. And Barry from long range My. will get the Huskies back within two. Look to have their own version of Jason Watts to the George Brown Huskies. And the pass goes a little over the head of Van Dyke, and the turnover committed here, and the Huskies have it once again. Now in the hands of Chris Fields. Chris Fields quarterbacking the play. Now over to Campbell. In the corner, firing off the mark is number five, Hani Ahmed. And here come the Lions again. Van Dyke brings it to half court. Looking for some help. He's oh. trapped, fouled, and he will set up. Great box out there on that last possession defensively by Darius Canty, as we'll see him check out of the ball game. And Jason Watts back in. Malik Akumba will enter the contest as well. He wears number 11 for the Lambton Lions. Akumba, a transfer, uh, first year in from uh, La Cité, actually, uh, in Ottawa, Ontario. Ball kept alive. Oh my. my goodness. All right, here we go. Malik Akumba, cross court to DeAndre Reed in the corner. Jason Watts fires three Boom. from Wilkesport. My goodness, Jason Watts. Have yourself a quarter. Watts on a switch. This D might be the loudest Lambton Lions crowd we have ever had here in attendance and certainly the most people that is standing room only here tonight. And we certainly thank you for joining us here as the pull-up jumper from Barry, no good. And here come the Lions again. Cam David has it. He wears number six for the Lions. Made the oh. West Division All-Rookie team. He's fouled on the way up and he will shoot two. Goodness, you can hear that contact from all the way up here in the booth, Tony. Cam David anointed all rookie team honors last night and rightfully so, Matt. That stat line on the year, the 13 points and five assists per game, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, but in the OCAA, that's yes. good enough to well get you into the top 10. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, David actually yet uh, eighth in the OCAA, and, and what a player, what a find he's been, uh, you know, for these Lions. Uh, an absolute dog of a player, you know, gives every possession all he has. Uh, a great defender, and those young guards, you know, to step into this league and to play at the level that he's played at this year is really unprecedented, and the ones that do are ones that usually end up having their jerseys hung in the rafters at the end of their career. Cam David looking for a lane. Oh, my goodness. Hot Was sizzle. Pull up. Look at this. No, he's fouled on the way, though, and he gets to shoot two more. Cam David bringing the heat right now to the George Brown defense, and there's no answer for him on the perimeter. David, a 78% free throw shooter. Good for 13th in the OCAA. Was certainly a case for him to be Rookie of the Year this year in the West Division if it weren't for Marco Malatic over at Fanshaw. Just an incredible season that he had, so perhaps rightfully so, he walks home with the trophy last night at the annual awards banquet. But Cam David, named to the all-rookie team, and that in itself a tremendous honor here in the OCAA. And I'm sure the Lions faithful, glad to see him wearing the baby blue. Yes, sir. Speaking of wearing the baby blue, you can see he's a bit of an old-school player, as we said, a bit of a dog. He, he uh, gives it every all, his all on the possession, every possession. And you can see in the way he wears his shorts, he's a little bit, uh, bit retro, maybe early to mid-2000s in the way those things fit. 
As fed down low is Kingsley De Silva, first team all-star in the Eastern Conference. Journey Joseph gets it opening. His lane is closed. He'll bring it back out. Looking for some help. DeAndre Reed will try and set the screen for him. Journey Joseph is dispossessed, and here come the Huskies. Bringing it past half court is Campbell. Line's got to pick up in transition. There, there's too many open looks here. George Brown's just turning them down. Campbell pulls up. The three is short, and DeAndre Reed pulls down the rebound. Handed off to Cam David, the rookie. Will slowly bring it to half court. Oh. 30 seconds to go in the opening frame. Lions lead by oh. seven, and the three rolls out from David. Might have been a little bit of contact there, Tony, that wasn't called on Cam David from three. He had a bit of a wide-eyed look coming back in transition. Perhaps you're right. Campbell looking for some help. He gets it over to Gall. Now in the hands of Chris Fields. To De Silva for three, no. Another and open look. It's almost as if Lampton's daring George Brown to shoot the three-point shot. At the buzzer, Journey Joseph launches. It is off the mark, and a shot might have been a little late. Don't think it would have counted anyway. But nonetheless, tremendous first quarter for the Lampton Lions. Currently in the driver's seat, they lead by seven, 21 to 14 over the George Brown Huskies, the consensus number one team headed into the OCAA tournament here. If you're just joining us, you're watching the OCAA Basketball Championship quarterfinal matchup between the Lambton Lions and George Brown Huskies here on your TV and OCAA.com. I'm Tony Frangus, joined by Matt Rose up in the broadcast booth. And regardless of what platform you're watching on, we certainly thank you for joining us this evening. Would also like to give a quick hello to those of the VIP alumni lounge across the way from the broadcast booth here as they enjoy some libations from the uh, excellent view. Oh, fantastic. Here at the Athletics and Fitness Complex. Fantastic view and fantastic place to watch a game. This, uh, there's not really a bad seat in the house here at Lambton College, Tony, and uh, brand new facility in our second year of existence here. And uh, as you can see through our, our wide angle pan shot here, the, the house is packed and, and it really goes to show you that this community, uh, you know, is a basketball community and this sport is beloved, uh, you know, within Sarnia Lambton. You know, I think we were looking at a week ago, perhaps two weeks ago, when those weekend passes finally sold out. And here come the T-shirts. It is raining T-shirts from the broadcast booth here. None of these tees for threes like you'd see at the old Palace of Auburn Hills. You don't even have to wait for a three-pointer. We'll just start throwing them. There you go. And out they come. We like to have some fun here in between oh. quarters. 21 to 14, Lambton Lions lead the George Brown Huskies. The veteran Jason Watts leading the way for the Lions. He has six points. And on the other side, it is Nassim Barry who has put up the only double digit number so far yeah, for couple, the Huskies. Couple of big shots made by Nassim Barry, really stretching the floor for uh, George Brown and, and forcing that Lions defense out there. As we said, you know, the Lions uh, uh, fairly happy with allowing George Brown to, to take that look from three as they've left a few guys open. I mean, the uh, Huskies themselves shooting 31.4% uh, shooting from, uh, from the three-point stripe, or three-point line, sorry. So we'll look to see if that's something that the Lions uh, and, and head coach James Grant are kind of strategizing and game planning around. Second quarter now underway here. Chris Fields has it for George Brown. George Brown going from left to right on your screen wearing the white uniforms. The Lambton Lions going from right to left wearing the baby blue uniforms. And that's a finish Kingsley De Silva normally has. Journey Joseph has it near half court. Looking for a lane to open up. He'll hand it off to Akumba. Jason Watts backing his way in now on fields. Turn around. Fade, no. And it's pulled down by Barry. Uncharacteristic miss as well on the other end by Jason Watts. Journey Joseph, a fantastic on-ball defender. Cam David now there. outlet pass to DeAndre Reed. He is blocked from behind. Let's see, we do get the foul call. DeAndre Reed will set up for two. Great pace here for the Lions to, to begin the second quarter. Tony, as we talked about earlier, this is a team that loves to get out in transition, loves to play fast, an opportunity to get this crowd involved, which is what they want. And uh, we'll see if they're able to keep this up throughout the, uh, the remainder of the quarter and hopefully the game. First free throw from DeAndre Reed is off the mark. 
Reed currently sitting on four points here in this one. As his second attempt is off as well, and it is pulled down by De Silva. He will hand off to Chris Fields. Lions in a straight man-to-man -man defense here. Big matchup to focus on is taking place on the left side corner, Watson De Silva. There's Kingsley De Silva in the corner. Considered pulling up for three. Instead, he will float out. They'll work it around the horn. Oh, you never want to run at guys at the three-point line. Just beating the shot clock, but the effort fruitless, and back come the Lambton Lions. Cam David will bring it past half court. The outstanding rookie this year for the Lions. Oh, they got he the will switch. drive. He splits the defenders off the glass. Give them two. Chris Fields almost stripped by DeAndre Reed. And Nassim Barry pulls up at the free throw line. It's off the mark. Journey Joseph with the rebound. Here comes Lampton once again as Tyler Van Dyke visits the scorekeeper's table. He'll check in at next whistle. Cam David almost had an opening. Works his way oh around De Silva. He's going to try again off the glass. No, just a little too much. And here comes Kingsley De Silva in transition. He's fouled by DeAndre Reed to slow down the pace. Just a tough foul. Tough foul to take. First team foul for the Lions. Lions one of the more disciplined teams in the OCAA when it does come to fouls though. They're kind of at the lower end of the mark there. Bottom three at last check. If you're just joining us, it is the OCAA Basketball Championship quarterfinals between the Lampton Lions currently up 23 to 14 on the George Brown Huskies and earlier today we had well a couple of lopsided games Matt and uh, one well thriller that came down to really the last few moments anyway earlier today we had the Humber Hawks cruise to an 88 to 60 victory yes. over the Georgian Grizzlies followed by the Seneca Sting my goodness I don't even know how to describe it it was a three-point clinic they put up against the St. Clair Saints so Seneca cruises to semifinal Saturday and then of course the Sheridan Brewer, uh, Bruins and Redeemer Royals my goodness Matt what a game that came down really to the last few minutes yeah fantastic ball game uh, uh, our last one there as we've said earlier you know nine point differential really not uh, indicative of of uh, how the game kind of really transpired however earlier ball games uh, you know Humber's a, a fantastic team and a team that that uh, in all honesty I expect to see you know, playing for uh, a medal on Sunday. Obviously, they've made it through, but uh, a gold medal uh, on Sunday. And and the Seneca Sting, I mean, it's tough to, to put a value uh, at this time of year on uh, on head coaching, but they come in with head coach Jay McNeely, who really is one of the best at his craft in our league. And uh, we, we saw uh, what they were able to do in terms of execution today. Inbound to Hani Ahmed. Ahmed with Journey Joseph guarding close by. Now in the hands of number two, that is Robert Ocampo with the miss. Boy, the, the Huskies are ice cold from three right now, Tony. Tyrell Miller over to Journey Joseph. Telling Darius Canty to get out. Canty with De Silva close by. Journey Joseph Ooh. was there, but Darius Canty will go off the glass. The Canty man getting two. Fantastic player, Darius Canty, a transfer in from uh, Macomb County Community College uh, in uh, just outside of Detroit, Michigan. Originally from Ecorse, Michigan, and what a tremendous pickup he has been for the Lions. An impressive rookie campaign for him. Look Ooh. out! Oh, Jason Watts there with the one-handed putback, though. Did you see the lights flicker? <laughs> a little amplified coming our way here. I thought we were about to see that rim come down, but cooler heads prevailing, and there is number nine. That is Caldry Campbell. Journey Joseph will walk it to half court here now for the Lions. Currently in the driver's seat, they lead by 11. 6.40 to go here in the second quarter as Tyler Van Dyke hands it back off to Miller. They work it around to Joseph. Canty has it at baseline. He'll back his way in, and he is stripped, and... Here come the George Brown Huskies again in transition, working it quickly around. Mismatch here on the ball, which creates a mismatch as well down low now as Oh, Campo. Dyke. 
Hits the three. Big shot, Bob Ocampo. Second year guard out of the Philippines, Matt. Probably the most traveled player out of the bunch on the court here today. That's fantastic to see how international the games become really at the uh, at, at the collegiate level here in Canada and here in Ontario specifically. Uh, the Lions themselves, uh, two American players, one from Hungary on the roster. Uh, and, and as you said, Robert Ocampo, a native of the Philippines, uh, coming in with this George Brown team out of Toronto. Lambton Lions able to get it back here. Journey Joseph will inbound to Tyrell Miller. Eventually. <laughs> Last possession, we did see the, uh, the George Brown Husky switch to his zone, uh, which really forced the, uh, the Lions to uh, kind of move away from Jason Watts in those high post options as they were sending Kingsley De Silva up to the elbows to shadow. And as soon as the ball got into the post with Darius Canty, he was double teamed and creating a turnover and a Huskies opportunity the other way. So we'll see if, uh, if Coach Lance Hawkins decides to, or sorry, Jason Dawkins, my apologies, uh, decides to remain with the zone um, as we move forward here in the quarter. I want to once again thank the countless amount of volunteers who have put countless hours into putting together this tournament and the festivities surrounding this weekend here at the Athletics and Fitness Complex for the OCAA Basketball Championships. And of course, we want to thank our honorary chair, Leo Routens, for joining us this evening. Uh, last night at the awards banquet, was nice enough to send along a video message yeah. to all of the competitors. Earlier today, spoke to the Lampton Lions uh, down in what we affectionately know as the Lions Den Bar. A little bit earlier today, uh, before the game, kind of give them a little bit of a pep talk. And of course, joining us up here on the booth as well, delivering the game ball out to do the ceremonial opening tip off. Leo Routens, a friend of the OCAA, without a doubt. And a friend of the Lampton Lions. His second trip down to Sarnia since we've opened this gymnasium, Tony. I believe he was here to actually help open this a little bit over a year ago. Uh, full court press here, 2-2-1. Two, two, Cam David out to Jason Watts. Watts with the handoff again to Cam David. Got to back, Tyrell Miller. Back to the man-to-man -man defense for the Huskies. Tries to feed Darius Canty a little too much on the pass, and it is out of bounds. It is Huskies ball. 5.29 to go. A little surprising, I imagine, to uh, see here, Matt, that the Huskies have been held to just 19 points. Yeah, this is a team, like we said, so efficient. Uh, third highest scoring in the league, 92.7 a game. He can wave off that three is... Heel caught the boundary line, and it is Lions ball. Something to be said, too, though, about the uh, the various conferences. I mean, traditionally, the uh, the, the Western Conference in the OCAA is uh, uh, a harder conference, a tougher conference to come out of with the likes of Sheridan and, and Humber, uh, both Blue Bloods, as we say, uh, in, uh, in college basketball here in Ontario, as well as the Fanshawe Falcons and, and Mohawk Mountaineers. And, and, you know, throughout the last few years, what really Coach James Brand has been able to build up with this Lions program. Chris Fields receiving the outlet pass. He is stopped by DeAndre Reed, but the Huskies able to maintain possession. That is Ahmed firing from long range. Watts gets the rebound. He's got a few choice words for Ocampo as they head back in transition. Oh, Jason Watts, there boom. we go. Add that one to the highlight reel. Jason Watts amplified in the building. Don't let him get going, George Brown, because we saw what he did to the Sheridan Bruins, his last home game here. Chris Fields immediately answers back with three as Cam David slows down the pace here for the Lions. He brings it past half court, calls over to Tyrell Miller. Miller goes back to Cam David, trying to draw an opening. Oh, Darius beautiful. Canty, turn around. Canty had Reed open on a cut there. Uh, they, they got it to the inside of the zone. They had the overlap, but he just didn't see him. And Ocampo firing from long range, at least three or four feet back from the arc. All of a sudden, Tony, we got ourselves a ball game here. The momentum starting to shift in favor of the George Brown Huskies. Still with 3.45 to go here. The Lions will have something to say to that as Tyrell Miller fires from long range. No good. Reed can't pull down oh. the O-board. 
And that's got to be a frustrating move for Hadi Ahmed as he tried to keep it in bounds. Got possession, but his foot caught the line. And it's back in possession of Lampton. 14 seconds now. New possession in the front court. The Lions will have to work with. See what kind of sidelines out of bounds play they got going here. Gone are the days, Tony, really, of, of running a play to try to get a basket. Most of the time, it's just trying to get it in without getting the five-second violation. Also gone are the days of throwing your opponent into the camera bay, like the, <laughs> the bad boys of the Pistons there as Watts is fouled, and he will shoot two. Yes, Jason Watts, fantastic rebounder, uh, and, and through his career has been a fantastic rebounder. Really developed his game. I mean, I remember when Jason came over here as a, a third-year transfer in, as we said earlier, from St. Clair County Community College. Very raw, uh, always a natural shooter of the basketball uh, and a natural athlete. Uh, but really, his his basketball IQ is, is what's set him apart here in the last few years in the league and really turned him into what we would call a perennial all-star. A precision shooter from the line and from beyond the arc as well, and he shows it there two for two for number 42. As the Lions increase the lead to seven here, 3.20 to go in the second quarter. Lampton Lions, George Brown Huskies, the OCAA Basketball Championship quarterfinals. Our final quarterfinal game of the day as it's mishandled and back in possession for the Lampton Lions. We'll see Joseph check into the game here for the Lions. Journey, of course, uh, a native as well of Brampton, Ontario, and uh, played his secondary school basketball at Bramley Secondary, right around the corner from uh, where I grew up, Tony. So he's a, uh, a, a blast from the past, if you will. Played under the, the tutelage of uh, head coach Stephen Williams, now at Arendale Secondary in Mississauga. DeAndre Reed is stripped by Ahmed, and he will, oh. Oh, goodness. Lucky for him, Kingsley De Silva was there for the follow-up. That's just a good old-fashioned case of the yips. Well, the pressure cooker is on here, that's for sure. Yeah. Cam David you tries can't... to find Jordy Joseph in the paint. I think you... a foul call got missed there. I... I'm, uh, I'm a little shocked there myself, Tony. I had to contain myself that there was no call here. I mean, the official on the back side had the same view basically we did. And, uh, you know, the defender came right across the arms of Journey Joseph, but none the wiser we are. Has it ever worked in your experience for a commentator <laughs> to appeal with the official and change the call? Unfortunately not. Journey Joseph poking it away, but there's De Silva to get the loose ball. Shot clock is down to three. Firing is number 12. Oh, Asim Barry can't finish, and here come the Lions. Journey Joseph almost missing the pass. It's poked away. There's Cam David. The He's got to get it on the line that They quickly. are allowing them to get away with finally a call here, and that is just unbelievable. I mean, Cam David was probably fouled four times in the span of six seconds, and, and finally, I guess the fourth one is what they caught. And one thing you're going to notice about Cam David, not a word said to the referee. Yes, sir. Everybody else in the building, they have a word or two. But Cam David, <laughs> that, that never happens, Tony. Never, never. Oh, and defense. DeAndre Reed called for the charge. That's debatable. See, and the tough part about that there is, you know, that, that's a call. Two guys banging around. We've allowed a lot of contact under the basket with rebounding. Uh, you know, we allowed three or four fouls to take place there before the first one's called. And then we come back down here and we, we got two guys that are just battling for position and we're quick on the whistle. So, uh, you know, it's it's a little bit tough here for the Lions, obviously. Uh, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're still in a battle here though, so need to turn this around and, and get another stop on defense. Chris Fields has it now for the Huskies to Kingsley De Silva. He'll pull up for three. That's it's off the game. mark. Journey Joseph gets the rebound. Tyrell Miller has it. Outlet pass to Jason Watts off the glass. Give him two. Fantastic look by Tyrell Miller. What an outlet pass. I, I thought he was going up top, Tony. Since the new year, this season can be summed up as the evolution of Tyrell Miller. What a great player he's turned into as Ocampo answers back with the tray. Oh, my. Range limitless for number two, Robert Ocampo. Cam David 
with now a minute to go. Tyrell Miller gets it. He looks for three. Yes. Answer, baby. From Adelaide Metcalf. Chris Fields now. Hands it off to Ahmed. Spins. Good for two. Two possessions left here in terms of time in the second quarter, first half. Darius Canty looks to drive past De Silva. Bumps him, and the shot is well short. Here come the Huskies once again, 30 seconds to go, and the Lions lead by five. Ahmed. Ooh. Nassim Barry. To Barry. And we had a foul there. Is there a foul committed, or was that just a kickball, Tony? That's what we're looking to find out. Didn't catch the gesture from the ref. We'll have a substitution take place here. 14 seconds on the shot clock. New possession uh, in the front court here. So uh, Lions will have 6.7 if the Huskies decide to take this all the way down. The East Division Defensive Player of the Year, Chris Fields, will inbound after a lengthy discussion with the referee. I believe they're, they're actually trying to figure out how much time was left on the shot clock. That's the deliberation right now. Because if it was a kickball. And after all that, we are going to get a timeout out of it. There we go. Head coach James Grant. Good use of a timeout, though. Uh, you, they don't carry over into the second half, so if you got one, you got to use it. And we'll see Coach James Grant try to drop. He's probably going to go into the huddle at this point, uh, Tony, and he's going to drop something defensively and he's gonna drop something for the possession afterwards, the final six seconds, to get going offensively and give his team an opportunity to gain some momentum going into the half. The winner of this game gets a matchup with the Redeemer Royals on semifinal Saturday. That will take place tomorrow. If you're the Royals, who would you rather play in this situation? The number one team in the province in the George Brown Huskies or the hottest team in the province and the host Lampton Lions, it's a tough decision, really. It, it really is, Tony, but based on the uh, on the history between the Redeemer Royals and, and the Lampton Lions, of course, playing uh, you know twice a year against each other, a familiarity there between coaches and, and coaching styles and an understanding of what each other or what each other's strengths and weaknesses are, not to mention, as you said, uh, you know, the impact the home crowd can have on that basketball game. I'm, I'm sort of leaning, if I'm Jamie Girolamedo and the uh, uh, Redeemer Royals, I'm leaning towards George Brown. Well, unfortunately, you don't get to choose your opponents. <laughs> well, isn't there some chat about making that a thing in the Major League Baseball postseason? I feel like that's come up recently. That, that may be the case. I mean, uh, it would be definitely interesting how they would be able to, to navigate that in terms of logistics. Can you imagine a major pro sports organization deciding playoff matches based on who the opponent wants Ooh. or who the top seed wants? Interesting. You may have some organizations that may choose opponents based on travel instead of sheer strength of schedule. It's an interesting possibility, but it doesn't mean it's a good possibility. <laughs> yeah, not all ideas are good in a, ideas. In a traditionalist sport like baseball. <laughs> Adi Ahmed is going to shoot here. Second Team East Division All-Star as the Lions faithful make a ton of noise. And Ahmed is short. And there is the effect of your home crowd. And now that the Lions fans know that their noise makes a bit of a difference here, it's going to get a little louder. Matt, we're going to have to talk a little louder. We're going to have to start using our outdoor voices here. He oh, goes over wow. two from the line. That's, Joseph gets the rebound. That's a 70% free throw shooter going over two. Shot clock is off. Ten seconds to go here on the first half. Lions lead by five. Got to get going here. Five on the clock. Wow, great defense. And Watts. a shot from Watts. Boom. Jason Watts. My goodness. Amplified, gets the building going, and that is exactly what the Lions needed to steal some momentum, get this crowd back into it, headed into halftime. My goodness, Jason Watts. 
And I think we're in for an electric second half here. Right now, the Lampton Lions lead 39 to 31 over the George Brown Huskies in OCAA Basketball Championship quarterfinal action. The fourth out of four quarterfinal games, our final one of the day. And it looks like we are ready to go courtside here. Tyler Bennett standing by with Lions head coach, James Grant. Tyler Bennett, of course, with Lampton head coach, James Grant. James. Big shot there by Watts at the end to kind of send you guys into the half with a boost of momentum. What does that do for the confidence going into the second half? Yeah, we needed that. They went on a run there, um, and we were, we were struggling a little bit offensively, but, I mean, we've talked time and time again about Jason Watts' ability to provide a spark for this team, fifth-year guy, and uh, we're looking for him in situations like that, and that was really nice of Jerry to find him. Playing in front of a crowd like this on your home floor with uh, a shot at the semifinals within reach, what does that do for the guys' confidence here down the stretch? You know what? Like, they're, they're part of what... What's like a dream come true for this college? A small school built this facility and believed in us, and uh, the community coming out full full crowd. Like for for the people listening, and the people here, like these guys really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. it's making all the difference. All right, James. Best of luck. Second half. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tony. Tyler Bennett, courtside. Thank you very much. And you can tell head coach James Grant he's uh, starting to run out of voice a little <laughs> bit there. And I don't blame him one bit. I mean, I'm sure he appreciates the support of the home crowd, but at the same time, I think he'd like to preserve his voice. Hey, oh. We certainly would too. Oh, of course, of course. And uh, You know, James Grant, the players are out here giving their all, coaches are out here coaching their all. So uh, Jason Watts, 17 points leading us into uh, the second half. Lions lead 39, 31. Second half action coming up momentarily right here on your TV and at OCAA.com. Stay with us.
It's the U11 World Championships here. Number nine streaking splits the defenders off the glass and it's good for two. Mama, give me some more of that moist cake. <laughs> Uh, U11 action here taking place at the half here. It is the Lambton Lions leading the George Brown Huskies by a score of 39 to 31. Matt, what did you see in the first half? First half, excellent uh, half by the Lions. I mean, you couldn't ask for more. Going into the half with the lead, home crowd behind you. Stole some momentum there with the Jason Watts three at the end. Uh, Watts has really put his stamp on this game, both offensively shooting the ball, defensively rebounding the basketball. And the Lions have really stymied this George Brown offense. I mean, 31 points and a half for a team that averages 92 on the season. We'll see if they're able to mix up some uh, ideas and opportunities. Didn't really see much other than a man-to-man, -man, a half-court man-to-man uh, deployed by the Lions. And seeing some fantastic defense here from Team Blue in this U11 game here at the half. Um, but let's look back at a little bit earlier here today. A couple of lopsided victories we saw early on. The Humber Hawks with a convincing win against the Georgian Grizzlies. They move on to the semifinals. They're going to play the Seneca Sting, who had no problem dispatching the St. Clair Saints a little bit earlier today. Put on an absolute clinic from beyond the arc. And then, Matt, uh, the Redeemer Royal Sheridan Bruins game, the All-Western Conference tilt. Uh, yes, like sir. we mentioned, generally the more competitive of the two conferences. And it certainly showed in that Redeemer versus Sheridan match matchup which she's the Royals uh, go on to semifinal Saturday uh, fantastic uh, matchup really looking forward to that game tomorrow uh, you know be between the uh, the Seneca Sting and the Humber Hawks it's going to be a real contrast in styles in those two games the the Hawks and and Jalen Morgan who's a fantastic player very physical uh, all facets of the, of the game a University of Manitoba transfer into that program a few years back and a uh, fantastic basketball player and as you said, Tony, uh, taking on a, a team that likes to shoot the three ball. Here again, uh, number eight for the Huron Lakers U11 team, coached by uh, Connor McSweeney and Mike Levy, taking part in the uh, Lambton College broadcast. Or, uh, sorry, sorry, taking part in the uh, halftime of this Lambton College basketball game. Looking forward to what semifinal Saturday brings us here, and the Lambton Lions will look to make it for the first time in four years. you got to go all the way back to the 2015-2016 postseason, that bronze medal right. performance, that ridiculously stacked team with Mike Lussier and, and the likes of him. And Jason Marshall, yeah, Brandon Marshall on Padgett. That team, Padgett, Sean Hill. Will Lara Caston. Oh, that, that semifinal game that year, Tony, was honestly one of the best games of basketball I've ever seen in my life. We're going to take a short break. Uh, we will get back to the second half of this game momentarily. Here the Lambton Lions lead the George Brown Huskies 39-31. Quarterfinal action continues at the OCAA Basketball Championship here on your TV and OCAA.com. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back momentarily.
second half action about to get underway. We're about two minutes away from the resumption of this game. The Lampton Lions lead the George Brown Huskies by a score of 39 to 31 in this OCAA championship quarterfinal game. The final one of the day. So far, we know semifinal Saturday is going to feature the Humber Hawks taking on the Seneca Sting. And the winner of this game has a date tomorrow afternoon against the Redeemer Royals. Uh, take, turning our attention, though, to the uh, women's side of things that's taking place today at St. Clair. I believe it was at St. Clair. Yes, wasn't sir. It? I believe yes, sir. I want to get that right. St. Yes. St. Clair College in Windsor. Uh, the Lampton Lions there, unfortunately, falling to the Algonquin Thunder 66 52. That was the first game of the day. Second game of the day was the Fanshawe Falcons uh, going in as, as one of the top seeds in that tournament, 79 70 over the Durham Lords. And still to come in that one, uh, George Brown uh, at St. Clair, and Sheridan will take on Humber. And that is on the women's side of the OCAA championships uh, taking place elsewhere this evening. But here at the Athletics and Fitness Complex in Sarnia at Lampton College, it is the Lampton Lions. 39 to 31 over my goodness Matt the number one team in the OCAA the George Brown Huskies the East Division champions and the well first silver all uh, with a 17 and 3 record which really Matt we could acknowledge anyway uh, 18 and 2 but they started the season with an ineligible player yes sir yeah they unfortunately forfeited that game to uh, the Centennial Colts uh, and then didn't lose a game again Tony until uh, back to back in a weekend in February, the 7th and 8th against St. Lawrence and Loyalist. So uh, uh, really a, a weird facet, but other than that, rattling off 17 wins on the season. Uh, familiar storyline though, these two teams meeting in the playoffs. Uh, this is actually the third straight year that these two teams have met either in the OCAA final tournament or in the play-in games, Lampton coming away victorious in the first two matchups. Lampton Lions didn't have to worry about the crossover game this year as they were the hosts, so they got the automatic entry regardless of their record. And we asked head coach James Grant, well, why don't you just sewer the entire season just so nobody ever sees the full lineup? But not obviously a very good way to go about playing <laughs> a 20-game schedule. <laughs> Meanwhile, the uh, road for the George Brown Huskies a little more difficult, but they pulled it off a 91-80 victory on Saturday against the visiting Niagara Knights. A second half action is about to get underway here. Tyrell Miller is going to inbound to Cam David, and we're back at it here, 39-31. Lampton Lions lead the George Brown Huskies. It is OCAA Championship quarterfinal action. Here on your TV, we thank you for joining us. I'm Tony Frangus, joined by Matt Rose here on the broadcast booth as DeAndre Reed pulls up for three. It is off the mark, and it is pulled down by Derek Taylor. Watts now defending on the outside. A little bit of a mismatch here. We'll see the switch as Kingsley De Silva drives and kicks. And from long range, it is Hani Ahmed. Cutting the deficit to five. See how the Lions are able to start on the second possession. The first was a little stagnant offensively. Ooh, David comes in, a little bit of contact, no call. Back at it here, Ocampo. Finds Taylor back out, working it around the horn, oh, and no. wide open for the tray. It's Hani Ahmed. That is not how the Lions want to start the second half. And a quick six points. Has made this a one possession game. Lions will look to right the ship quickly here. Darius Canty gets the loose ball. He's got an opportunity to get a post up here and that's exactly what he does. Uses his body size, can't get it to go. Turnaround jumper just a little bit off the mark here. Back come the George Brown Huskies. Canty doing a good job splitting up the play. It will remain George Brown ball as it ends up in the bench. Interesting to see here as we mentioned in the half halftime uh, uh, prelude looking to see what the Lions do defensively here in the second half whether they mix it up or continue to go with this man-to-man -man. George improved in the first half they weren't really able to make a, a three-point shot as Tyrell Miller has a shot blocked we're gonna say the uh, block from Ocampo was clean goes out of bounds it will remain Lions ball 16 seconds still on the shot clock as Watts calls for it Thought we were going to see a catch and release there, but perhaps not. Tyrell Miller will do that, though, and just way too much gas on that one. Yeah, Miller's not not necessarily a uh, an established three-point shooter, we'll say, in this league. Just as of yet, something he can definitely grow with. And my goodness, Jason Watts 
says no thank you. Kingsley De Silva, the play split up there. Goes out of bounds, 14 seconds, still on the shot clock for the George Brown Huskies. De Silva back out oh, to Taylor, no left wide open, but no, the shot well off the mark, and DeAndre Reed gets the rebound, and he's going to look to do it alone. Gets around Barry, but can't you, finish it off. You'd really like Reed to use his left hand on that finish instead of trying to go reverse with the right. And the Lions have been shut out in the first two minutes and 20 seconds here of the third quarter. And beautiful play there by Cam David. He anticipated the drive by Ahmed, came in, set his feet, waited for the contact, absorbed it, and we're going the other way. Just doesn't want to absorb it on the top of his head like he did there, but it seems like he's going to shake the cobwebs and he'll be fine. As Tyrell Miller, number two, will inbound for the Lions. The Lampton Lions going from left to right on your screen, wearing the baby blue uniforms. The George Brown Huskies going right to left, wearing the white. As Darius Canty goes off the glass, too much on it. And back come the Huskies once again. It's Nassim Berry. Berry tries to split Watson Miller. Instead, he's going to hand off to De Silva. Baseline turns around on Watts off the glass, and we are tied. You get Kingsley De Silva within six feet of the basket, and you are in trouble. Cam David walking into half court with Ocampo guarding close by. David gets a bit of an opening here. He goes off the glass, oh, no man. way too much on that one no. as well. And the Huskies look to retaliate and possibly take the lead on this possession. Here's something they haven't seen in a while. And that is number 12, Nassim Barry. It's off the mark. Tyrell Miller gets what? it to DeAndre Reed. Reed to Cam David now. Lions are ice cold to start the quarter, and it continues with a missed layup there. Been three minutes and almost 25 seconds without a bucket. Oh, and a missed layup on the other end, but a follow-up there. Derek Taylor will finish the play, the six-foot-five rookie out of Toronto. And the Huskies now have a two-point lead, 41-39. to The Huskies on a 10-0 run here to start the second half. Cam David will look to end that, and he does with the simple layup. Finally. Hopefully that breaks the ice. George Brown did exactly what you want to do on the road in a playoff game. Coming out a half, down eight, came out hot, took the crowd out of the game, took the momentum out of uh, the Lions' hands, and now are taking it to them. And Ocampo was begging for the ball in the paint, begging for the feed from Nassim Barry. Didn't get it, but the Huskies draw the foul. Able to maintain possession here. Lions uh, with such a young backcourt. I mean, this this really isn't the uh, traditional blueprint, I guess you could say, Tony, of a of a team that looks to make a deep run in the playoffs. Uh, you know, two first-year players starting at the guard position. Uh, you know, a, a few uh, you know players moving in and out of the uh, of the program throughout the season has forced James Grant into starting such a young backcourt. But both players, as you said, have have really thrived, especially in the second half of the season. 5.54 or 5.54 to go here. 41-41. Lampton Lions and George Brown Huskies are tied here in the third quarter in this final quarterfinal game here on quarterfinal Friday of the OCAA Championships here at the Athletics and Fitness Complex hosted at Lampton College. Barry gets it to Fields. Back to Barry. Oh, and he's made a couple of those. The Lions are kind of tempting him again. Floater well short, and DeAndre Reed has a handle on it now. He'll bring it to half court for the Lions, who look to regain the lead. Lions got to look to get out and transition more. When they were doing that in the first half, it led to a lot of easy baskets. Now they're kind of slowing the game down, and that doesn't really speak to the pace of this team's offense. And Darius Canty from Moortown. TD, the bank is open late. Going off the glass, excellent work from Darius Canty, showing off his long range. Currently showing his two on the scoreboard, though, wondering if his foot caught the line. Unfortunately, we don't have a review in place to check to see if that ball's on the line. Oh, we're going to go with two for now. Oh, man. And Kingsley De Silva draws the and one. That is a fantastic play by Kingsley De Silva. Took the ball to the block, or took the ball to the basket, shoulder down, absorbed the contact, great finish, showing you why, Tony. He was a first-team OCAA All-Star. 
Some debate up into the booth here as to whether that should have been an offensive foul or not, but nonetheless, the call will stand. And De Silva gets to shoot one. It's off the mark, ah. but there is Derek Taylor with the putback, and it's now a two-point lead for the George Brown Huskies. That's a way to make a bad possession worse. That's out of bounds, and it will be Lions ball. Jason Dawkins with uh, a, a gesture of exasperation there. Not sure what he's unhappy about. George Brown Huskies not giving an inch on defense here. Now full court man to man. Darius Canty will bring it past half court. He drives, tries ah. to get over the defenders. Tough shot. And here comes Kingsley De Silva Somebody's again, the first team all-star. Stop the ball there. Now Chris Fields. Perhaps looking for an opening here. The pick and fade from number 11 to Beery. Gets a handle on it, no good. And there's De Silva fighting for the offensive wow. rebound. He's fouled on the way up. Watts doesn't like the call. But Kingsley De Silva will set up and shoot two. Kingsley De Silva pulls down another offensive rebound. He is uh, one of the best in the business in this league in terms of offensive rebounding. Averages about three a game. That's good for sixth in the OCAA. And really, if the Lions don't start getting a body on somebody down low, this game could uh, take a different turn here into the second half. Lions faithful making some noise as Kingsley De Silva hits the first one. This crowd is a lot quieter, Tony, than they were headed into the uh, into the half and throughout the second quarter. And that's exactly what this George Brown team wants. 21 goes two for two from the line, and it is now a four-point lead. Lions need to find a way to gain some of that momentum back here. Start with a good possession on offense. Huskies outscoring the Lions 16 to four here in the third quarter. And the momentum shift, I think, is complete here as DeAndre Reed backs his way in, and he gets two points back. Beautiful. What the Huskies have done a really good job there, especially on that last possession, is they are on Jason Watts. They are not giving him any kind of room. There's a hand on, a hand up. Not letting Jason Watts beat them right now. Tabiri steps back, good for two. Uh, Christian Tabiri, a fantastic player out of Westview Centennial. Secondary school in Toronto. Cam David. Way in his options. Taking his time, not rushing anything. And there's that a lot of contact physical down play there. on Jason Watts. Journey Joseph, he drives baseline, kicks back out to Cam David. My goodness. The, yeah, there is, there's a couple fouls there. And the, even a late whistle on the one that they did call. I mean, Jason Watts, all kinds of physicality down there. Battling away, though, that's the kind of guy Jason Watts is. He, he's a never give up. He's all heart. This is a guy that, that started basketball late. Jason Watts really didn't, you know, start playing organized basketball till grade 10 in high school. As a referee, you see these tangle-ups happen, and I'm wondering how much of that do you really let go before you call the foul away from the ball? Uh, realistically, I mean, uh, basketball is a contact sport, contrary to, uh, to popular belief. So you can't allow contact. It's just as soon as the contact begins to, you know, impede a player's opportunity at occupying his own space or the ball, then that's the time that you blow the whistle. Chris Fields trying to get around Journey Joseph, goes off the glass. Fields is off the mark. Jason Watts. Can't corral it, goes out of bounds, and we're going to have a conference here. Oh, boy. The official call is Lions possession. However, from up here, it looked clear as a bell that Jason Watts was the last one to touch it. This is a long conference, though, so the one official might, it looks to be correct, Tony, and it will be George Brown okay. Huskies basketball which seems like the more reasonable call based on the sequence we just saw. Chris Fields has it now for George Brown. A little bit of physical play down there between Watson to Silva. Calls for the handoff to cut our goal. Yes, and the Lions desperately needed this. The timeout taken by the Lions here, and the conference, I think, will be to talk about really both ends of the court. 
for sure, Tony. A as we said earlier here in the quarter, the Lions have really gotten away from what got them to this uh, th that point in the game and that lead at halftime is capitalizing on transition opportunities, getting Jason Watts open looks. It's, uh, it's really been a, a frustrating quarter as uh, the Lions so far have been held to six points. Lions outscored 21 to six here in the third quarter by the George Brown Huskies. And they now lead the Lambton Lions by a score of 52 to 45. But you know what, Matt Rose, still plenty of basketball to be played. Yes, we sir. still have an entire fourth quarter. We still have the remainder of this third quarter here. And a seven point lead is infinitesimal compared to the amount of time that is remaining. A seven point lead can evaporate in a matter of seconds. And well, frankly, we saw that at the start of this half. The Lions had an eight point lead and talk of that right now is long gone. Yes, sir, and, and it's something that the Lions need to, they can't allow this George Brown team to really run away with this game, especially so early. Uh, you know, they really need to, to try to take this last 304 here in this third quarter, ramp it up, get a couple stops defensively, and uh, the ball's gonna eventually go into the basket. This team is too good, too talented offensively, uh, you know, to be held uh, to such a number in the quarter. Uh, so what they're going to need to do is just step it up on the defensive end and, and shots will go in. Uh, you know, that is the game itself. Uh, it's going to happen. Lions just have to weather the storm. Darius Canty trapped near half court ah. and the pass a little too far in front of Cam David. And here come the Huskies again on the miscue. It's goal. Coach's worst nightmare there. You call a timeout, draw something up, turnover leads to a basket the other way. Journey Joseph to Darius Canty. Canty pull up, long range is no good and it is corralled by Fields. That is a long two point jump shot and analytics and basketball say, Tony, that that is the worst shot to take. The low percentage long range two didn't pay off in that case and here come the Huskies once again looking to bring the lead into double digits oh. and that is Tabiri doing exactly that. The lead is now 11. What a move. And Tabiri, we talked about in the uh, in the first broadcast with Foster Brown being the Swiss Army knife of the Redeemer team. Christian Tabiri is the Swiss Army knife of this George Brown team. Great effort by Darius Canty, though, to go up and under off the glass. And we'll see if that's able to bring a little bit of momentum back to this Lions squad and this, this home crowd here. Really been neutralized. Canty, great defense. My goodness. There's Tabiri going off the glass, retaliating with two more. Lions need a couple stops and a couple baskets. Get this to, to eight or nine before the quarter and... Nearly dispossessed, oh. and they are that time. And back come the Huskies again. De Silva with the outlet pass to Gall. Was he fouled on the way up? No, they're gonna say it's clean, but it will remain. Huskies basketball is Tyler Van Dyke and Jason Watts. The veteran presence will re-enter the game for Lampton. And we'll, we'll look to see uh, what Van Dyke can bring to the game off the bench for the Lions. Need a little bit of lift and a little bit of energy. Uh, player out of Mississauga, Ontario, Tyler Van Dyke. Former Hoops Canada AAU player. Fields will inbound it to Beery. Oh, the catch my. and release. Three burns him, and it is now a 14-point deficit for the Lions with a minute 20 to go, and perhaps, Matt, a crucial minute 20 when it comes to the morale of the Lions heading into the fourth. Yes, sir. This is a, a crucial point in the game here. The Lions need to get something going offensively. Journey Joseph Another is stripped turnover. by De Silva. Just plagued by turnovers right now. They work it around now in the hands of Chris Fields. Wide open look. And, and there's De Silva gets the feed in the lane for a two-handed slam. And here comes another timeout call by the Lions. And that is a tough timeout to take, Tony, although warranted by head coach James Grant. It really puts him in a tough situation. Uh, I believe this is his second timeout they've taken uh, in the uh, in the second quarter, or sorry, in the third quarter, second half which limits him to only one now for the fourth quarter. And if the Lions are able to draw this back close, that's really going to affect how things play out at the end of the ballgame. 63 to 47 now and really a tale of two halves. The Lions came into the third quarter here with an eight point lead and now face a 16 point deficit. And time quickly running out. You hate to think like that, but there is still a fourth quarter to be played. 
the momentum shift can change on a dime here, but they'll need a couple of good stops. And in particular, Matt, like you mentioned, a couple of good goes on offense here. They've been held to just eight points so far in this third quarter. Meanwhile, the Huskies currently at 32. They eclipsed their first half score in one quarter here in the second half. And, and that is what good basketball teams, teams that are poised to win championships, that, that are number one ranked seeds in these types of tournaments can turn around and do. 50.7 seconds to go here in the third quarter. George Brown, 63, Lampton College, 47. Just like that, the George Brown Huskies are right back on pace for that 92.7 uh, points per game. And here goes the Lions faithful, really starting to make some noise now, giving them some reassurance that the crowd is still here. We are still at capacity, still standing room only. Oh, and there's a critical turnover in the paint as Tabiri goes off the glass, gets two more, and the deficit now at 18. Tough, making a face cut there and not having your hands ready for a great pass by Cam David. Cam David bounces to Jason Watts. Watts goes cross court to Van Dyke. Van Dyke was thinking three. DeAndre Reed gets it back to Van Dyke. Shot clock down to five. Cam David is going to have to work quickly. Goes over the defender, well off the mark. And here comes Tabiri once again as the game clock down to two. My the lead in three is off the mark, and DeAndre Reed launches it after the buzzer. And I think that one more so out of frustration. Yeah, and, and you know what? It was overall a frustrating quarter for this Lampton Lions team. I mean, uh, to give up 34 points defensively is, is not something anybody wants to do in a quarter, and it's really not a recipe for success, uh, especially when you're held to eight points yourself. So if you're the Lampton Lions now, you have 10 minutes. You have to overcome an 18-point deficit that's been handed to you by the top team in the province. You've seen how the Huskies have played for the last three quarters at both ends of the court. What is your plan of attack if you're head coach James Grant to the Lampton Lions going into the fourth? What, what the Lions need to do in order to find themselves uh, back in this ball game is really give Jason Watts an opportunity, uh, draw something up, draw a play, get, get him an opportunity to get an open shot or an open look. I mean, 17 points going into the half, 17 points going into the fourth quarter, stymied really. The, the George Brown Huskies made those adjustments defensively as we talked about taking away time and space for Watts. Now it's time to draw something up specifically for your fifth year senior who's playing for his career at this point and give him an opportunity to put this team on his back like he's done all year and win you a basketball game. Action will get underway here again in about 45 seconds or so. It is the OCAA Basketball Championship quarterfinals. It is our final match of the evening here a little bit earlier today the Humber Hawks dispatching the Georgian Grizzlies the Seneca Sting no issue with the St. Clair Saints and a close one the Redeemer Royals defeating the Sheridan Bruins a little bit earlier today and now the George Brown Huskies coach, coach with the James, lead over the Lambton Lions now coach James Grant stick, sticking with the reserves it appears to start this quarter Van Dyke remains in the game as well as Journey Joseph Watts re-enters here. Watts still leading all scorers. He has 17 in this one. However, shut out in that third quarter. Lions look to set something up defensively. Barry for the Huskies. Going to kick. Kicks back out to Fields. To Barry. Oh. Still down to six on the shot clock. He's fouled on the way up, and Barry will set up at the line. He gets to shoot two here. A great play there uh, run by Jason Dawkins and the uh, uh, George Brown Huskies. Nassim Barry comes off, wide open baseline cut, uses a screen at the top, and finds himself in a good position, unable to capitalize on the first free throw, though. All-rookie team selection, Nassim Berry goes one for two from the line, and the lead now up to 19 for George Brown. The Lions 
with every tick of the clock, it gets harder and harder for this team to find themselves back involved. And there's Jason Watts. Fighting for two points off the miscue from Cam David. There's Jason Watts. He's up to 19. We need an opportunity here for a defensive stop. Journey Joseph, the Lions' best on-ball defender. Ball's kicked. That's Barry at the three. Barry goes over Jason Watts. It's off the mark. And there is Campbell with the rebound here with the reduced shot clock now down to seven seconds. And the pass well in front of Gall goes into the Huskies bench. And the Lions perhaps with an opportunity here to start the momentum shift. Yeah, way too many offensive rebounds given up here by the Lions in the second half. And luck, got lucky there. Uh, Tough pass thrown into the corner as the uh, George Brown player vacated, tried to reestablish position at the top and sent into the bench. Cam David to Journey Joseph. Joseph drives, glass two. And that's Journey Joseph's game. And the Lions faithful have come alive here in the fourth quarter and the offense perhaps has woken up Looking for the defensive stop here. There's Nassim Barry. Hand off to Kingsley De Silva, the first team all-star. He'll pull up. Looks for oh. two. Nothing but net. Buckets. Kingsley De Silva. Journey Joseph will bring it to half court now here for the Lions. Hand off to Tyler Van Dyke. Cam David getting tangled up with Ocampo in the paint as DeAndre Reed goes off the glass. Let's see what the call is here. Perhaps a foul away from the ball, and on the it ground. will. It was on. It, it was a push on uh, on DeAndre Reed, uh, driving to the basket there. So ruled it on the ground before the shot. Well, it was a gentle push, nonetheless, not an overly aggressive one. That one might have been a little more so. I think Barry might have got away with one as Journey Joseph leans into the tray. It spins out. Boy, could the Lions have used a friendly bounce there. Perhaps they did as the Lions able to maintain possession here. 14 seconds. Kicked all the way out to Tyrell Miller. Cam David, he'll drive baseline. What Kicks to Journey Joseph, open for three. Too much on the shot. Out of bounds. It will remain Lions ball. Kingsley to Silva. Not a fan of the call at all, but the Lions get another opportunity here. Yeah, five seconds on the shot clock, though, Tony. So the Lions are going to have to be quick here execute something, get the ball in. They'll probably look to throw it up top to David just to get it in and, and break the five second count. But you, you look to immediately perhaps draw something up for Jason Watts. And they do exactly that. He draws the foul, couldn't quite finish, but one of the better free throw shooters in the OCAA will set up for two. Yes, sir, 79% free throw shooter, Jason Watts is. Elected. His first second team All-Star nod last night at the annual awards banquet. Uh, can I talk about that a little bit, Tony Frangus? Please do, as Jason Watts hits his first. I, I, I'm a little bit perplexed at that because Jason Watts, a, a fifth-year senior, uh, you know, a guy that averaged 17 points, 10 rebounds uh, in, in the top five percentiles in, in free throw shooting and, and second in, in three-point percentage, almost 50% from three, which is unheard of. And to be elected as a second team All-Star really in my mind is a snub. This is a guy that's played in the league for three years, established himself as somebody that is, is an absolute threat on all ends of the floor. And you know, unfortunately, I feel like there's a little bit of a, a big city bias there where uh, you know the Lions weren't able and, and Jason wasn't able to come away with first team hardware when I feel he was deserving of it. 17 points, 10 rebounds, average a double-double. Darn near impossible with the OCA, it feels like, but Watts pulled it off, and perhaps you're right, maybe should have got a first-team nod, but I'm sure he appreciates the, the plaque he'll receive for his second-team selection as Journey Joseph looks for three. Yes! And that is a big shot, Tony. 13 points. Lions get a stop here. We got ourselves a ball game. Ahmed. Huge play, offensive oh, foul. That's goodness. an illegal screen, Tony. 
What a fantastic play there. Cam David, I believe, was the on-ball defender, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, George Brown trying to run that high screen again. David sees it coming, able to move around. Defender throws his hip out, and boom, we're going the other way. Lions here walking with a little more skip in their step and perhaps an opportunity to further cut into this deficit that was approaching the 20-point mark there. DeAndre Reed looks to drive, and he goes off the glass, backhanded for two. 11 points. Still with seven minutes to go. The Lions still very much in it now. Little switch. This left. And to very open, oh man, a screen. Cam David sunk underneath. That forced Jason Watts to take the cutter. And now Tabiri left wide open. DeAndre Reed looks oh, to go up and under. He is fouled hard. And the ref gestures too. DeAndre Reed setting up at the free throw line once again. Currently sitting at eight points at this one. See Reed step to the line here. 64% shooter. Made a couple from the stripe already today. First one is off the mark for DeAndre Reed. 10.7 boards per game this year for DeAndre to go along with 1.3 steals as well, doing it at both ends of the court. As the second free throw is good, the deficit now 13. For the Lambton Lions, six and a half to go here on the fourth against the George Brown Huskies, who lead 71 to 58. As Chris Fields, the defensive player of the year in the East Division, gets it to Barry. Looks wow. to go up and under, and there is Nassim Barry burning him for two more. Just need to keep position, or keep position, I should say, down low. Their hands up. Get vertical, no need to jump there by Reed. There's DeAndre Reed back it up to the arc. He looks to drive, finger roll is good. DeAndre Reed up to 11. As the Lions and the Huskies go shot for shot here on the fourth. That probably Reed got away I with the foul I think he there. did. Jason Watts closing the lane for Fields. Ahmed. Kicks back out to Fields. They work it around. There's Nassim Barry, the rookie. No good, and it's collected by the veteran, Jason Watts. Big rebound there by Watts. Journey Joseph now. The touch to Cam David from long range. Oh, no good. It looked good. He's got that range, too. He can knock those down. And walking it to half court. Yeah. Here's Hani Ahmed. We're going to see the uh, the Huskies use every second of clock they can moving forward. Did we get a foul? It looks like it, yes. And there is Hani Ahmed. They're going to say he was in the process of shooting, and he will set up for a pair. Only the Lions' second foul of the quarter. If nothing else, the Lions at least playing some disciplined basketball. Whereas the Huskies already get five team fouls here on the fourth. Ahmed's been affected by this crowd shooting free throws. And he misses the first one. As Kingsley De Silva is going to check in at next opportunity, the first team all-star. Big possession here for the Lions. 5.05 left. They need a stop. They need a bucket and then a stop. As Ahmed hits the second Free throw here, the deficit now 14 for the Lambton Lions. 74 to 60, the George Brown Huskies lead this OCAA championship quarterfinal matchup. The winner gets a date tomorrow at semifinal Saturday against the Redeemer Royals. Single digits, I believe, Tony, by the four minute mark, gives the Lions a good opportunity heading down the stretch. DeAndre Reed will look to cut into that. He got bumped while he was taking the shot, and there was no call. Walking it to half court again there is number five, Hadi Ahmed, second team all-star. Kingsley De Silva has it now. In the hands of Tabiri. Excellent My. for long range, and he does it again. Goodness. That young man. And the wind has been taken out of the crowd sails here. Lions still fighting, though. Cam David 
tries to kick to DeAndre Reed, and instead the pass is picked off. Fields bounced it to Beery. Glass, and there's two, and the deficit now at 19. And things are looking grim as the score starts to head in the opposite direction intended for the Lions. Yeah, Christian Tabiri, 19 points tonight, Tony. What a performance by this young man. Watts leads into a three. No good. Desperation maneuver as Darius Canty and Malika Kumba visit the scorekeeper's table. And I think the body language says it all over at the Lions bench right now. Yep. Three minutes, 43 seconds left. Unfortunately, perhaps the, the last three minutes and 43 seconds of, or 39 seconds now of Jason Watts's fantastic career here as a Lambton Lion. That was a travel call there, so that does work in favor of the Lions here. Malika Kumba, who's just checked into the game, is going to inbound. As Cam David has it. If the Lions have any prayer here, they will have to work fast. 19-point deficit here, 3.31 to go in the fourth quarter as Tyrell Miller tries to split the defenders, can't muscle his way through, and there's Campbell pulling down the rebound. Back come the Huskies here, and once again, some clock management by Ahmed. Christian Tabiri with the handoff to Ahmed. Out of bounds, they're going to say last touch by Miller. It will remain Huskies ball. If anything, uh, you know, that we've seen from Tyrell Miller today is fast hands. I mean, he's really, uh, you know, gotten in, knocked the ball loose a couple times, created a couple turnovers. Future's bright for these young Lions. He's shown a lot of defensive prowess all season, averaging about two there's steals per one. game, and there's a fine example right there. As Cam David receives the pass from Miller, he'll look to drive to the paint. Malik Akumba from three. That's it's off the mark. Darius Canty with the O-board, though. That is Malik Akumba's game, too. He's a, he's a known shooter. And Darius Canty is going to set up at the free throw line. We'll see De Silva check back in. Or off, sorry. De Silva will be leaving the floor as uh, head coach Jason Dawkins will look to preserve his go-to guy for what looks to be a date tomorrow, 6 p.m. with the Redeemer Royals, Tony. What do you see, uh, or what do you think of that matchup uh, tomorrow at 6? I think the Redeemer Royals, honestly, were better than their record showed this season, and they played like a number one team. And if they continue to play like a number one team and play against a number one team like George Brown, we are in for another thrilling matchup. A doozy, Without a doubt. if you will. A barn burner, yes, a hoot and any, whatever you Whatever old-timey language you want to use, yes. A good old-fashioned shindig. <laughs> Darius Canty is off the mark. Cam David gets the rebound. There's Darius Canty. Can't put it back. Jason Watts will get up there for two, though. That gives him 20 on the, or 22 on the night, sorry. And a, a bleak outlook for the Lions here with two and a half to go, a 17 point deficit now. Uh, switch there, puts David on a big man and he definitely grabbed a hold of the body there. Nothing you can do though, again, that, that screen, uh, that high screen and roll has really wreaked havoc on this Lions defense here this half. I mean, so many switches, so many miscommunications uh, and, and it's really led to a lot of easy baskets for George Brown, Tony. Ocampo. Jason Watts picking off the pass, though. Gets it to Cam David. He'll bring it to half court. And the Lions still playing on offense with some urgency here. Blocked, but fouled. And Cam David will shoot two yeah, with 2.15 to go. Foul will go against Chris David. Or, sorry, Chris Fields on Cam David. Cam David named to the West Division All-Rookie Team last night at the annual awards banquet, and rightfully so, first free throw is off. I've had the pleasure, Tony, of watching Cam David play basketball for about three years now, and 
Uh, you know, he continues to grow and develop as, as a player year over year. I'm excited to see what the future holds for this young man here in a Lions uniform. Uh, you know, he's he's got all the makings of uh, of a player that, that could be on uh, a potential Mount Rushmore, if you will, here at Lambton College. Canty going over the hand of De Silva on that play for two. And the deficit now at 15 inside of two minutes. Uh, I, Pretty I'm, big hill to climb here. I'm starting to chalk this up as you, Tony. We sit here, 152 remaining here in our fourth and final game. Double digit deficit by one team. You've called three games today, all of which have ended up in double digit deficits. So perhaps what you're saying is that as we head through the weekend, if my voice is able to survive to Sunday, we might see some blowouts as we continue here. Well, I, Matt Rose likes to bring you the excitement up here on the broadcast booth. I guess I'm the type who, <laughs> I guess in typical work fashion, wants to go home. Uh, we, we have a good time up here, Jody. Yes, we do. And, uh, and that's the most important part. So as we enter the, uh, the final timeout here uh, of the game used by the Lions, the head coach James France last time out of the evening. He'll look to rally the troops and Dave Walls, uh, director of uh, student, of the student associate, director of operations, sorry, of the student uh, association here at Lambton College, throwing out some t-shirts, is the most popular guy in the building right now. What I would like to know is why the amount of Lambton College staff are asking for a t-shirt that is as many as they are. What? That is quite the go quag. and Go to the campus store and just get one. <laughs> These are for the fans. <laughs> that is quite a quagmire, Tony. I think I make a reasonable point here. You work here, you probably have four lion shirts as it is. Let the fans get one. All right, back at it. Chris Fields well, I'm for glad, the George Brown Huskies. I'm glad we've both gotten on our soapbox here today. Chris Fields goes off the glass for two. And the Huskies now what up 81 to 64. Oh, under two minute, Tony. So team has uh, the opportunity to substitute when scored on. We're going to see. Uh, and here we go, the veterans coming in. Yes, sir. Seniors honored uh, at the final uh, Lampton College home game a few weeks back, February 22nd, or sorry, February 16th against Sheridan. Shaq Seymour. Uh, another player that I've had the pleasure of watching play basketball for about five years at this moment. Uh, you know, a, a guy that I absolutely love, have a great relationship with him and his family, fantastic uh, people. Uh, I wish Shaq nothing but the best moving forward. He's a, he's a fantastic kid and, you know, you, you wish him nothing but success and whether he chooses to pursue basketball or, or a career of some type, uh, you know, Wish him nothing but the best. Tyler Grievers as well, native of Woodstock, Ontario, number 24 for the Lions. Uh, Three-year guy, put in his time, graduating his program, and uh, is going to look to uh, move on to, uh, I believe, university to pursue his uh, academics in the fall. I think you got to be made of stone not to be moved by Jason Watts heading over to the Lions bench for, well, in all likelihood, the last time here, sharing an embrace with several of the teammates and currently his head buried there and imagine a very emotional moment for him as kind of an opportunity for him to say his final goodbyes here in a Lampton Lions uniform his final year of OCAA eligibility that is as a big move Darius Canty pulls down the rebound feeds Shaq Seymour oh! tries to go off the glass fouled hard and Seymour the veteran the graduate will set up at the line for two that is an aggressive foul at this point in the game by the young Probably man's fields. A little unnecessary considering the circumstances here as Bianunga and Gakira is going to check into the game number 23, the one they call B-Man. And Tyler Van Dyke will re-enter as well. Yep, B-Man, uh, another outstanding young man. Uh, originally from Hamilton, Ontario, moved to London uh, while he was in high school, played at Regina Mundy Secondary School. Shaq Seymour sporting number five at the free throw line here for the Lions. Second free throw is good. And he will get on the board in his final appearance in a Lampton Lions uniform. Can't help but feel good about that for uh, our young man Shaq. Minute to go here and the result of this one all but certain now.
81-65. Looks like we got a penalty situation here now. Lions get their fifth foul of the quarter, meaning the Huskies are going to shoot. And the Petrolia Ontario native Mason Hyde is visiting the scorekeeper's table. He is going to check in at next opportunity. Mason's get himself a, some postseason action here. Mason's a fan favorite. They call him the oil rig, being from Petrolia. <laughs> Played locally under head coach. And here we go. The oil rig is going to enter the game. Yeah, coming in. Played under head coach uh, Joe Sire uh, for the LCCVI Lampton. Uh, Collegiate Centennial Vocational Institute, that's a mouthful, uh, here in Petrolia, uh, and uh, had, a, had a, a nice little career there, and is able to walk on here with the Lions last season. Reavers setting the screen for Van Dyke. Mason Hyde kicks out to Shaq Seymour. Seymour will drive, tries to float over the defenders, no good. It's going to bounce out of bounds, and it will be Huskies ball with 41 seconds to go. And barring any incredibly unforeseen circumstances, tomorrow afternoon at 6 p.m., it will be the Redeemer Royals and the George Brown Huskies in the late game. That is preceded by the Humber Hawks and the Seneca Sting in what will be surely an entertaining tilt. Seymour giving it his all here just everywhere on the floor right now. Kicks and Van Dyke just trailing. Pass a little too far in front of Van Dyke and it will go back the other way. What a like to see the oil rig get an opportunity on the offensive end there. Still 19 seconds to go. Well, we'll see what the Huskies do with the ball here. Inga Kira, he's playing full press. Oh yeah. He'll play to the oh. bitter end here and with five seconds to go, The Lampton Lions season comes to an end. Fantastic ball game. This is a young team, Tony, outside of Jason Watts and a couple uh, senior graduates on, uh, on the reserves. Uh, you know, this Lions team is not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, Darius Canty and, and the rest of the starting lineup returns next season. Cam David and Tyrell Vickers are going to look to uh, come back better, uh, stronger, faster everything next season so uh, you know tough tough knockout this year but uh, you know at no point in time do we feel like this Lions team is going anywhere soon and with that we bid you adieu for this evening here as the game ball is about to be presented here the George Brown Huskies victorious over the Lampton Lions this evening 82 to 65 in this final quarterfinal matchup here on quarterfinal Friday of the OCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Tomorrow afternoon at 4 p.m., it will be the Humber Hawks taking on the Seneca Sting, and then at 6 p.m., the George Brown Huskies taking on the Redeemer Royals. Excited for both of those matchups, and uh, we certainly look forward to bringing you more exciting OCAA Basketball Championship action here on semifinal Saturday tomorrow right here at the Athletics and Fitness Complex at Lambton College. For Matt Rose, I'm Tony Frangus. Thank you for watching again. Your final score, George Brown Huskies 82, Lambton Lions 65. We'll see you tomorrow.